all the way from the uh, radio studios down on the Gold Coast from the Great Australian Doorstep. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome Peter Spider Everett. Give him a hand applause, guys. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Who's had fun today? Who's found what they need to buy? Who can't afford what they need to buy? Thank you very much. I'm exactly the same. No different at all. Alright, so who knows how to cook in a cast iron pot? Can you come and do this one? Because I don't. Well, I'm just a front man. I don't need it. I'm going to learn a fair bit today as well. Alright, so despite all we've got, we've got some, uh, some gloves. We'll try those on first because we're all about hygiene and the safety and everything else. You'll notice Nick's got a, uh, sorry, Nick's got a nice big thick pair of gloves so he doesn't burn his hands. We're just going to make a rocking rosemary rub to go on our, uh, our nice big piece of roast lamb here that we've got from the Super Butcher. So once we've got our gloves on, Now before we start, do you need oil in the bottom of the pan? A little bit of oil is good because we've got the potato in there. Well, we don't want the potato to stick too much. The reason I'm using potato in the bottom, I don't have a trivet in there. Okay, normally I'd have a trivet just to give me a bit of a buffer between the bottom of the pan and the bottom of the roast so it doesn't burn. I'm actually going to use some potato as my trivet. I'll just quickly put the rest of that one in there. Has anybody eaten from a uh, from the cast iron pots before while camping? How good is it? Oh, it's the greatest, isn't it? I've always left it to everyone else to do it. I've never actually I've tried it once, but it's hard just to determine. How do you determine the heat in it? Right, so the best way is not to go too hot to start with. Um, if it's not quite cooked when you think it should be, give it a little bit longer. If you burn it too quick, you might as well throw it in the bin and start again, and then you've got to wait another hour or so. It's just like cooking anything in the oven at home. Um, exact same process, it's just that you get to go out and do it in the, in the wilderness. Mentioned. The uh, Take Five for Kids, Hellensvale? Yeah, 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 we're going to do some cooking down in Hellensvale. We do a, a fundraiser every year. I do a breakfast radio on the Gold Coast at the moment, and we raise money for the Children's Ward of the, uh, the two hospitals, the Tweed and also the Gold Coast. So we're going to do some uh, stuff later on in the month. And, uh, have a big cook up, so it's a, a big month for, for us on radio down there, but a worthy a worthy cause. Well, hopefully you'll be able to do one of these um, nice little roast lambs. Okay, so we've got a little bit of olive oil here in our, uh, sorry, veggie oil here in our reusable pouch. I'll just throw some of that in there. All right, so into the, uh, the bowl here with the oil, I'm just going to mix about a half a cup of brown sugar. It's lovely fresh rosemary. You know what it's called, rosemary? Um, no. If, if you don't, that's okay, but neither do I. Oh, no, so, I don't. Does okay. anybody know why it's called rosemary? No one? Okay. No. And that, was, that was a million dollar question, too. Bad luck, like, sorry. Uh, yeah, we'll have to put that one on Google. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very yeah. close. Alright, so just a bit of pepper there from our pouch, and we've got some salt and some mixed herbs as well. I've got a big one for a bit of a stir. So we'll throw a little bit more oil into that one in a second. Now why brown sugar? So brown sugar because it gets that nice, sweet, sticky sort of um, can texture to it. It does rub nicely over the, the lamb. Caramelizes. Caramelizes and, uh, and goes really well with the lamb. It is good for other recipes as well. We'll just pop a bit more oil in to bring it all together. Now how long does this take to cook? Right, so normally, so normally with the, the marinade you probably let it go overnight. Um, but when you're out camping, often it's easy just to do it on the spot. And this is one of those ones that is easy, just do it on the spot and then slice your meat. Into the camp oven for about the same length of time that you would do in the oven at home. So just over a kilo of meat there, I'll give it just over an hour. So roughly an hour per kilo sort of a general guide. So you can see I've got that, that rub, it's just sort of falling through my fingers when I squeeze my hands. It's all like Vegemite on sayos really. So I'll just rub that all over the meat, cover the meat nicely with it. You can see it's still, you know, nice brown and fairly thick, especially with the rosemary and stuff in there. Can you slice the meat? You can slice the meat a bit, open up the grains a bit and that'll help the, the flavours get in it, especially given that we're not giving it overnight to, 
to soak in those juices and the and the flavours. So all over there. That looks pretty good like that. I'll just pop them in there in my oven and then we'll hand that over to Nick and Nick will put it in the fire. Unlike some of the big tough AFL players, Nick's a bit of a girl so he likes to protect his fingers. Yeah, fair enough. That's it. There you go, Nick. Do you want to pop that in the fire for him? Okay. So you don't need any other fluid other than that. The juices don't come out of the meat itself. The juices that will come out of the meat themselves will be enough to generate any steam that that would need to cook. My name is Nick. I'm Nick. I'm Ryan. We've been the Cast Iron Boys. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you for coming along and not falling asleep on me. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon and the rest of the long weekend. Thank you so much.